is what they should be saying. And the same way that bowel cancer societies should be just saying outright, um, don't consume uh, processed meat. Often the language that they'll use will be something like eat the least amount possible or minimize it or something like that. But with one egg, you've basically maxed out your daily allowance for cholesterol. So if you're eating one egg, the rest of your diet that day would have to be vegan to stay within the guidelines. When you're talking about a whole egg, you're talking about a food product that's 63% fat. <laughs> There's so much obviously wrong with eggs in terms of just, just taking a glance at what nutrients they contain. What they're made of. So do eggs, eggs have not an effect on blood cholesterol? Eggs, eggs uh, yeah. are used to make chocolate cake, okay? No, no. <laughs> like they're used to make brownies. Well, that's it's irrelevant. not a health food. Um, it never has been. Like salt, is you, does, that's irrelevant. I want to point out, though, that eggs, in terms of affecting blood cholesterol, I'm finding a lot of contentious reports on that one. There is no, yeah, so, there's no doubt to the fact that they have yeah, so high I, in I cholesterol. I can explain that to you. There's, so there's something called the, the Hegstead equation, um, or there's also the Keys equation. Basically, the idea is um, what happens is if you don't have any cholesterol and very low saturated fats in your diet, if you add a stack of it to your um, diet, it'll have this huge spike. And um, as you add more and more, there's uh, the response is uh, less and less. Um, and that's where the contention comes in. So what happens is if, you, if we got I know, someone like me or one of the other people in here who has you know, no cholesterol and low saturated fats in their diet and you just added um, a bunch of saturated fat and cholesterol to their diet, you'd see a massive spike in their cholesterol levels. Um, but then if you got somebody on average who's eating quite a, you know, let's just say two, three eggs for the sake of the argument, and then you add an egg, the, f the effect that the first two, three eggs would have had on the uh, vegan or, or whatever is, is um, or, or the, fir the effect that the first egg would have had on the vegan is not going to be the same as the fifth egg on the person who's eating right. saturated fat and cholesterol like, I think on a daily basis. I'm kind of understanding. It seems like if you have the right diet, multiple eggs are fine. And if it matters, my blood cholesterol no. is well under control, and I've had like about two eggs uh, like on average a day. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you mean by under control because yeah, um, you cope with cholesterol is also a huge extent. Okay, so one, then two, regardless, then egg, I would be fine. One egg is giving you 24 grams of fat, 7.5 grams of saturated fat. I'm sorry, just looking at the basic, basic facts of what is an egg. Eggs are not right. health food. They have never, it's but not broccoli. I'm, my health not seems beans. to be in check. It's not a healthy I'm, food stuff. It never I'm has been. Like cholesterol is a huge issue. Because it doesn't matter, I'll, right? I'll, I'll, just, I'll, just, well, I'll, just, I'll just make, I'm, a, I'll just make a simple intrigued. statement. So the, the, the amount that you would have to eat to get good amounts of nutrients from eggs um, is quite a lot. And by the time you actually start getting some nutritional value from them, you'll also be adding in a whole lot of problems from them as well. So... I think I can't remember off the top of my head because I haven't seen for I haven't looked at it for a while. But they'll often talk about things like selenium, B12, and and shit like that. I think yeah, like B12 you can get from it. like fermented things. It, they do have you, selenium. You can get it from several other places. You can just eggs do have it. You some can get fortified in foods and, and shit like that. Yeah, no, I'm just using it as an example. So you've got things like B12 and selenium. And yeah, B12 shit like you can that. get from a lot of vegan places. Yeah, but no, no, this... that's that's not the point. Uh, the point I'm making is that. The things that are advertised as being good from that you can get from eggs, you often have to eat quite a lot of eggs to get a, an okay amount of, of of that thing. So whether it's B12, selenium, whatever. But once you start actually eating enough to get some value from the eggs, you start getting such a large amount of cholesterol that the positive is far outweighed by the negative. Right, and the ideal um, amount of cholesterol in the human diet sure is that. zero. Look. To get the same amount of protein from uh, uh, one I egg, can, if you're not you, sure about that, I'm, I I'm happy decision. for you to just just tell me what nutrients you think you're getting. And well, then we eggs, can I mean, I would just like to see any sort. I would just like to see like some maybe some academic papers that say that eggs are just a waste of time. Wait, we can as do far it, as I but know, no as far as I know, yeah, somebody can drop that. But as far as I know, eggs do fat ratio. Interesting. Can you stop problem. talking over each other. Yeah, like thank you. So I mean, j just for what it's worth. Well, hold on. Let me if you're, this. if you're saying, let me just finish this thought. Let me just finish this thought. All right. As far as I know, eggs 
are seen to have a beneficial amount of nutrition, especially for like what they like per weight or per ounce. Uh, and if you want to show me, if you want to convince me that eggs are just a wash, they're just basically um, sacks of fat or sacks of cholesterol, just like give me the empiricals on that one. Yes. Yeah, so what what nutrient? I mean, I'll just ask you what nutrients you're actually do you think you're actually getting from them, and what value do you think? you're But getting? look, can I answer I his remember. question? Sorry, he's asked a direct just, question that you're not answering. Couple, I can answer that just question. Give me a couple okay? of things. Sorry, PCRM had a famous. So PCRM is F Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. They had a famous, famous lawsuit taking the egg lobby to court precisely because they were violating U.S. national guidelines on health. That they were presenting advertising claiming that eggs were healthy. And that actually, even if you read the U.S. government's own guidelines, they were not healthy for exactly these reasons. So there are famous cases that document this with real facts and real studies and everything else that went to court and set precedent in the United States of America. And that's not that many years ago. That's why those are famous, well-known cases. Yes, it's good for you to ask for academic studies. But as I said earlier, you haven't looked up the basic nutrition data, like the ratio of fat to protein. Eggs do contain a lot of protein. Okay, It's a significant concession. I'm not going to say to you eggs have zero nutritional value. Eggs contain a lot of protein. So a whole egg has about 30.6 grams of protein. That's a lot of protein, okay? However, in order to get those 30.6 grams of protein, you're getting 24.2 grams of fat. And a lot of that is saturated fat. It's incredibly unhealthy and there's cholesterol. Now, by contrast, the staple of my diet is a type of red bean called an adzuki bean. For me to get the same amount of protein as one egg from these red beans, gives me 0 0.4 grams of fat, okay? So 0 0.4 grams of fat versus 24.2 grams of fat. And azuki beans have zero cholesterol, zero saturated fat. These are trace amounts of plant fat that are contained in these beans, okay? So there is, there is no comparison. Eggs are not a health food. They're not comparable to beans or broccoli or salad or anything that's healthy. Uh, I'm just going to put a picture up in all right and i also had um uh while uh i was saying something i was looking at uh different like academic sources about the effect of eggs on health some as far as i know uh seem to be suggesting that eggs are part of a healthy diet and some are saying that eggs are neutral and i'm trying to find ones where they say that eggs are like a component of like heart disease, like as I'm, I think I might be, I might be doing this wrong, or I think I might be uncharitable in the sense that I'm limiting my, my searches oh. from 2015 Whoa. up. So it could be I'm, that I'm things an expert that are just one second, just just one second. So, um, like I, I put up just this is just a quick Google, um, nutrition, um, uh, sort of table that I put up. So, uh, I don't know where I think this I also said 30 science. grams. But this is, yeah, so egg one, 100, this is 100 grams of eggs, which I think is like, uh, I think a lot or medium or large egg is something like 50 grams or some shit um, was what it calculated. But so this is about, um, I don't know, uh, one egg or so maybe worth, I think it gives you about 13 grams of protein, which isn't a huge amount. It, it covers your entire day's worth of um, cholesterol and so vitamin A, 10%, vitamin C, nothing, uh, vitamin D, 20%, calcium, 5%, iron, 9%. It's a garbage so food. If, if, if you think that through, um, and B12, I think it says 14%, So which, which is B12. So if you think that through, that's the you'd have to get any of those up to 100 to your daily amount. You'd have to eat about five eggs a day to actually get a decent amount from them, right? Um, and that's just probably maybe vitamin D. And the best way to get vitamin D really is to just go out into the sun. Things like vitamin A, you can eat two carrots um, and that will give you your entire day's worth of vitamin A. Um, B12, again, you can just take fortified calcium. You can eat fortified uh, soy milk or whatever. And that'll give you more than that, just from just from a glass or just from a bowl of cereal worth of, uh, of soy milk. That'll easily give you way more calcium. Um, there's the the mechanism by which it causes heart disease is the cholesterol that is is in in the egg. So it's not just saying eggs cause cholesterol. Uh, so egg cause um, heart disease. It's egg the cholesterol in eggs causes a spike in your cholesterol, and that is the mechanism by which it occurs. 
So it, okay, it's, you both got that infographic. The first point made on that infographic from PCRM is the same thing I said. It's over 60% fat, calories from fat. There's no way any food is going to be healthy that way. It doesn't matter if it's vegan or not. It's, you know, obviously it's not a health food. Consuming eggs increases your risk of cardiovascular disease by 19%. Colon cancer by five times. Diabetes by 68%. Leave prostate cancer by 81%. It's, it's rich in cholesterol. The ideal amount of cholesterol in the human diet is zero. Some people, there is a genetic range of how much cholesterol you produce and how much you retain as a person. Somebody, Isaac will remember, um, uh, fucking uh, uh, Maud Vegan. She has that genetic anomaly. She can eat an infinite amount of cholesterol and never have cholesterol problems. She's one of those people on the spectrum. So before she was vegan, she could eat bacon all day and her cholesterol would never go up. Some people have that condition. But uh, nevertheless, the ideal amount of cholesterol in the di human diet is zero. But hey, it was more intellectually stimulating to have to debate whether or not, you know, uh, using chicken poo as fertilizer ethically justified <laughs> animal products. Can I add a that couple points? It was more difficult to debate. Hey, it's Mike here. I just want to, I want to add a couple of points if, yeah. So, uh, I'm not sure if anybody linked it. I'm in like my tiny house right now, so I can't type anything, but. Oh, he's gone. You cut out. He was silenced by the Russians. You hear that? Egg, egg consumption and carotid plaque that, uh, shows an exponential association between, uh, egg consumption and carotid plaque. That's pretty much on par with smoking cigarettes. And I just want to know, my main question is why do you think that cholesterol doesn't cause heart disease so I, I assume you admit that eating cholesterol raises cholesterol do you uh depending on how so there's like ways that cholesterol interacts with the body where eating cholesterol doesn't necessarily translate into blood cholesterol right there's different you can um, literally when you eat a egg you see a spike in cholesterol two eggs larger spike in cholesterol three eggs. uh the studies in my uh cholesterol doesn't raise Eating cholesterol doesn't raise cholesterol uh, video. I'm sorry, I can't get it for you guys, but I, I have the study. I, have I, can, I can put up a um, meta-analysis where they had uh, people in wards. So basically they controlled their entire diets. And there's a meta-analysis of several kinds of these studies whereby uh, they added I'm like, and today, one of them out of people's diets and it had a predictive effect of uh, increasing and reducing um, right. cholesterol as they did it. So I, I'll just link that up. But either way, I mean, I, I don't think there's a case to be made that eating cholesterol in the form of eggs does not raise cholesterol. I mean, it's probably one of the main reasons that the vegans idea, are the only ones with eggs. But the idea is that when you raise cholesterol, that there is an acceptable threshold you can raise it to, as it also can be a source of fat that your body might need. Well, what do you consider an acceptable threshold that you're probably still going to die of heart disease? Because the only group oh, that, that has, is. you know. Yeah. The only group that has ideal level of cholesterol, the only diet that's been shown to reverse heart disease is a whole food vegan diet. So the moment you're including cholesterol, it's over. Wait, when you say reduce heart disease, you mean from people who are at risk? Reverse heart disease. So study, you know, Esselstyn study, uh, 200 people putting them on whole food vegan diet, showing unclogging of arteries. You know, these are people with advanced cardiovascular disease. Over 12 years, 60% of the people who failed the diet it was about 30 people. They had 60% rate of heart attacks and strokes. Of the so 277 people like that danger, stayed on though, it, 0.6%. Right? Yes. Okay. So that's just okay, an example. So that's that's yeah. another end of that, the same discussion because most people are probably going to die of heart disease. Right. So if in the case of uh, someone who's at risk or has conditions where they want to reduce their cholesterol, I think it's fairly Everybody. obvious that you should do things to where you want to reduce your cholesterol, right? Everybody is at risk of heart disease. I mean, if you look at a study, uh, I believe it was, fuck, it was um, cholesterol. I can find it later. But uh, virtually all children by the age of three now in the U.S. have fatty streaks on the aorta. The last thing you want is high cholesterol. You know, we're seeing spinal disc degeneration leading to, uh, you know, caused by clogged back arteries in 11 to 16-year-olds now. And that's a Volvo Science Awards winning study. I, I got to find the names. Just, of all these okay, just less the nutritional egg. value of eggs was raised here as a justification for the acknowledged immorality of farming, factory farming, and from his perspective, to a lesser so smaller farm. Wait, who, if right, who raised you that? Think, if, so just let me finish my sentence. Only one sentence. If you think 
the nutritional value of eggs is so great that it justifies the animal holocaust that justifies animals living in captivity uh, their whole lives and then having their next slaughter having their next cut and so on then what do you think about edzuki beans edzuki beans must justify mass murder on an unbelievable scale you must worship edzuki beans as if aliens have landed from outer space because the nutritional value of a common food like edzuki beans is exponentially so much healthier so much more impressive than eggs even if you just glance at the basic nutritional data I have no idea what you're trying to communicate. Somebody translate for me. Um, I'll just keep it simple. Well, basically, there's no need for um, cholesterol in your diet. And the very small amount of benefits that come from eggs is way um, is going to be just way outweighed by the negative it brings. There's no need for dietary cholesterol in your diet. And most people, is without even doing a blood work on you, would benefit by far by just taking dietary cholesterol out of their diet and swapping saturated fats for um, poofers, seems for like, example. But it seems like you would need cholesterol in your diet, at least some amount. No, um, there's, at least that's, there's, there's actually, that's <clears throat> incorrect. So your body synthesizes... I, um, would it, I think it would be more convincing to me to like just see the literature, in all honesty. Yeah, I mean, I can Because like, literature you, is persuasive to me, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can... I can give you a lot of literature. Um, I can just show you a um, a link from a state government um, health website, which um, obviously is not pro vegan or anything like that, or, or anti animal products. But this simple, they'll just say it simply that cholesterol is not required in the diet. Just give me two seconds, I'll get you that link. Yeah, that's much better. Thank you. It's frustrating because all my videos have like fifteen you know, an average of like 15 studies underneath them. And I just can't show you right now, but any, all the studies I mentioned it, you know, you're seeing that spike in cholesterol and then you want to go further of, uh, do you think that high cholesterol is damaging? Wait, what was the, what would you say? Do you believe that having high cholesterol is damaging? Obviously. So you do. Okay. So that's, that's uh, a lot of people deny that openly. Who so would deny that? that. Uh, no. literally everyone. Wait, did that. I ever give the impression that I said that, Cholesterol, like high. In fact, I said this explicitly that high cholesterol is just going to be bad for you. But did I, did I get off the impression that well, I think still, cholesterol? I mean, just just like, the fact that you were would deny the fact that eggs would be a danger to cholesterol. It's right. very oh, much part of erasing say, the diet heart hypothesis. That well, the reason I said it wasn't bad is because I'm looking at like health guidelines right now as we're talking, and the amount of cholesterol per egg seems to be like if you um, that you can have two and still with, remain within the healthy level. Well, the normal um, range and normal up, uh, is unhealthy in this current but, situation. I didn't hear you. Can you repeat that? Someone else was saying something. It was in the normal. Okay, there's normal in a sick society where most people are probably going to die of heart disease, and then there's optimal, which is not considered the standard normal. So you can, yeah, you can maybe hover just under 200 where you're still probably going to die of heart disease, but to get under, you know, 150 or you know, ideal in terms of LDL is you know 50 to 70. Uh, my LDL is, I think, even lower than 50, and that's basically impossible if you eat eggs. And so you're going to have progression of atherosclerosis and likely to be die of heart, you know, still likely to die of heart. Here's the, like, Harvard eggs. thing I was reading that talks about the vita uh, the vitalness of some cholesterol in your diet, or I guess in your body, technically. Yeah, like just, is just quickly. Um, so I put up just above your link. Um, it's a link to the uh, the Victorian, so the state that I live in, the government. Australia. <sighs> yeah. And I think it's they just in the dot points, there. in the first three dot points. Yeah, so we know about our cholesterol. <laughs> Are you proposing there's right. a danger of not having cholesterol in your diet? Um, it seems like cholesterol, from what I read, uh, it seems like cholesterol is uh, needed for making like types of hormones in your body. And hormones, hormone production, usually you don't want to fuck with. We still make 80% of the cholesterol in our body, depending on how much you consume. Like on average, 80% uh, okay. of our cholesterol. Gotcha. And there is, I mean, there are myths based off low cholesterol. So people who are dying of cancer, their cholesterol uh, might might go, you know, crash. And then people say, oh, low cholesterol yeah. is an issue. The link that but it's this guy gave says that uh, you can't, your body just produces all the cholesterol it needs. Yeah. So exactly. there's the so... Okay. So yeah, this is like one of like several things that talk about whether to eat cholesterol or to not eat cholesterol. Uh, but this yeah. is... This is persuasive, in all honesty. 
Yeah, and uh, if you want to tie it back to the original topic, I'm I'm okay with that. What is the original topic? Were you guys you were debating like fertilizer or something when I first came? No, that was just yeah. I was well, just fertilizer was one of the justifications for eating chicken eggs. No, so I, I, I so this is a conversation about eggs. Okay. Yeah, well, the point is ethical justification for well forgetting how this started. All right, we started talking about fertilizer as um, one of the things uh, in which like farmers use chickens for. Right, that they would still probably they they might still probably be on a farm even if there wasn't demand. Uh, what? That's definitely not correct. It would not be cost effective to raise chickens just for fertilizer. I don't think so. It's just fucking Looney Tune shit. Jesus Christ. Um, for for what it's worth, would it um be convincing? For, like, do you do you see a situation where the small scale farms are are um I guess. Um, scaled out and used as the method to feed. Yeah, I I think uh, no one here is going to agree that we ought to have industrial farms. Like the optimal mode of production should be to small scale farms. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and do you think uh, we uh, that it'd be a good way to like using animals on these farms would be a good way to I guess scale up and, and provi provide the most amount of food for people. Yeah, because there's uh, a lot of the things that we use in farms, like um, industrially produced manures, really ought to be phased out, right? They can't like support, or that yeah, but they can't support um, uh, like the agriculture over like entire world. So it makes sense to go back to a more sustainable form of ecology where you would ha like feed scraps and things that aren't fit for human consumption to animals, and they would poop it, and that would go back into the soil, et cetera. I do have you a bit of a problem. Like, have you that. lived on a farm um, like this? Oh, it's fucking hell on earth. Tell me more there's, of your anecdotes, young man. Dude, it's, <laughs> dude, like, what makes you think this is fucking lost Arcadia? To live on a small plot farm. What is that reference? Outside your window and ch um, a fucking uh, chicken hutch. You know, it's horrible. It's horrible for the human beings as well as the animals. And yeah, it's horrible to have a farm. Blood from the animals That's how and so people on. Unbelievably awful. lived for thousands of years. Can I add a point also here? Um, it, looking, you know, there's, there's, if you look at Polyface Farm, which is like the face, no pun intended, of like oh, where is it? Re regenerative agriculture. Yeah. Um, if you're Did looking you at a link their down, or should I Google thing, it? Polyface Farm. You never heard of it? Okay. Um, not top of my head. You can just Google it, but j just, just talking about the point here is that there's been a large. You know, I don't even want to say campaign, but just a, a notion that chicken tractors are all you need, et cetera, to be fertilizing. And then I believe there was a Guardian article, New York Times article, I can find it, um, showing that actually Polyface Farm was shipping in tens of thousands of pounds of grain to feed the chickens, which were then fertilizing, quote unquote, the uh, the cow fields. And so it's a matter of where the nutrients came from. And it's it's not the chickens. Right. Just yeah. The nutrients. The nutrients. Yeah, they got to be local, right? This was that has to be the case where you need to be able to recycle. Uh, that's why like production needs to be scaled to be um, to local. You can't have this kind of like international trade of food where nutrients are like leaving the soil. You got to like or you, you end up like destroying the soil afterward. But yeah, um, but look, you know, uh, I've, also I've just put up market. a link in general, um, <laughs> which actually addressed that fact. So the the sort of thought about the small scale farming. Um, and actually, it's often not that um, efficient. So if we're talking about a, a growing human population, it's often going to be the case that um, some sort of industrialized methods are going to be just better at feeding people. Um, so this is an article from a, a couple, I think, that runs a small scale farm. Um, but there's also an interesting comment by a guy called George uh, Monbio. Monbio. I'll just um, put up. I the did you post the veganism isn't the answer thing? George yeah, Monbiot wrote a series gotcha. of books on this topic. He's written several books. Go on. So is it is their thesis basically that uh, changing away from animal products isn't enough to uh, like meet the demands that industrial farming is trying to meet? Is that what they're trying? To so, so they're more saying that um, the best way to go about changing the farming products or farming production, I guess, is to uh, move towards more small-scale farms. Um, yeah, sort of what that's you're true. Going down. 
Yes. So um, <clears throat> in the comment that I put up, it's it's the first comment or the, the pick comment. Um, it's written by George Monbiot, who's a, a, a journalist for The Guardian as well. He's spent quite a lot of time. He's, he's actually pretty interesting if you look into him. So he initially turned vegan uh, and all of his concerns are just completely environmental based and food efficiency based. So right. he initially turned vegan um, because of the, uh, the environmental cost and how concerned he was with how much of environmental damage he was doing. And it looked like you could very easily feed the world on a um, vegan diet instead. Um, he then met some people who said that this isn't true. And if you do locavorism and shit like that, that would be better. And so he he flipped back being to being like a a, a, a locavorist type um, diet. And then about three years later, he flipped back again to veganism after he looked more into the numbers and found that most of the people that were making the small scale claims really couldn't back it up with the numbers. And he responded um, on this article. Um, and it's the, I think it's the first um, comment. So I'll just post it again, but yeah. Basically, he points out that the UK population could easily be um, fed if we went to a completely vegan diet, just even on an industrial type. Um, and not only would they be able to easily um, feed them, but they could easily feed probably four times as much. I guess my, my question is, do you believe that we can feed the world with a vegan diet? Do you believe that fertilizer right. is possible? Are we even I, disagreeing? I, I just I just realized that I hadn't pushed the push to talk about now. I was trying oh. to talk for a bit. Um, from what I've seen, uh, most or a lot of econo- uh, ecologists and uh, like especially like out of Rutgers, a lot of, they do a lot of agricultural sciences there. They say that if you wanted to create um, a production system that's going to be sustainable and can support people. Um, a pure vegan uh, method, uh, this is like from like the last 2016 onward, where there was like a resurgence in like interest, isn't going to be cutting it. Uh, and that there was, and like I linked one of the PBS articles about it earlier in, that uh, animal, especially with aquaculture and with um, like milk friendly, uh, I hate saying that word because I don't like milking cows, but I don't, uh, I would like bite that bullet if it like meant some sort of like sustainable outcome that fit, met, met people's needs. But it seems like a lot of experts agree that a, an efficient and um, sustained envi- uh, production setup is going to involve animals to some extent. Okay, so obviously I disagree with you. Um, you're probably getting that from the uh, Elementa study on carrying capacity, which looked at uh, feeding the world with and without animals. And uh, in that study, something you won't hear is that a vegan diet uses one sixth of the land. And so, at, and, but then there, the, the news sort of twisted it as actually you can have a larger carrying capacity on the earth because they totally miscategorize what is considered arable land. So they basically said anything that we're not growing crops on right now is not arable, which is absurd. It doesn't count anything that can be terraced. It doesn't count, doesn't count anything that you can plant. Uh, One of us cut out. I was going to say, it's insane the amount of talk? underutilized. No, it's insane no, the amount of underutilized thing. Look, you know, uh, this is in apropos the issue of uh, fertilizer, but it also covers a lot of the questions about byproducts and indirect quote unquote benefits of uh, animal products. Whey powder is extremely cheap. Whey powder is not valuable. It's a waste product spun off by basically the cheese industry by turning dairy products into cheese. So whey powder is available at low, low, low prices. Chicken poo also is a non-valuable waste product. They have to get rid of. Now, whey powder also, it's, it's very hard to get rid of safely. So they, they basically is a subsidized product because it's a byproduct they need to get rid of. If you can Google what the prices are for the different types of fertilizer – if chicken poo were valuable in the way you were suggesting, if that kind of fertilizer were valuable, it would be more expensive than chemical fertilizer on the free market. And it is not. It is that dramatically is cheaper. And again, I pointed out there is a cultural memory about bat guano. I checked the prices. Bat guano still is genuinely valuable, genuinely expensive. It's more expensive than chemical fertilizer. It's way more expensive than chicken fertilizer. The chicken fertilizer within Georgia, currently you can get it for $14 per ton. 
Uh, if they got to ship it further, it looks like the current price is $80 per ton, whereas you're talking about like $850 per ton for bat guano. So I just say the, the idea you started with, the chicken fertilizer is something so useful and so valuable that it justifies this stuff that is very I never easily said refuted that. just by looking at market value. I don't know why you keep straw manning that. That's ridiculous. Who said that? Did, some, did anybody hear me? Like Because chicken poop is so good for for farms that it's okay to just murder the shit out of them? No. It was a big part of your defense of small farming as opposed no, to factory it farming. wasn't. Yes, All right, did. go for it. Okay, then you expressed yourself very poorly. If you want to say that's not what you mean now, that's fine and I'll accept All right, that. if you I'm can't sure. repeat my own argument to me, right, you just can't do that, then I don't know why you're attacking it. I, I, must, be, I must be very stupid. I must be very stupid. Well, okay, thank you for, I think thank you for restating your arguments so clearly a, now. Why don't you let me I'm know why you you're not the it was only so one who has that opinion, which is good. Right. So we you talked about chicken long poo being. All right. What was the long narrative? Some. Well, I mean, do you want to do you want to finish up tying up just the idea quickly? The idea uh, that you need animals to feed the world. I mean, for example, right. up, from so the FAO, like, up to half. That's of the just going to be that's just going to be like empirical, right? That's not something that's going to be. Uh, that's not an ethical debate. That's not any of these other. Empirical debates, right? Now I'm, I'm remembering um, like the. I just add one reports. more point just to close the, that out, though, because I think um, it's important. I just want to add one point just to close it out because that's important. So, the amount of grain that we feed in North America alone could feed every single hungry person on Earth. People who are food insecure. That's from a Cornell article. Those you can easily that grain uh, edible, but to people, FYI. Doesn't matter. You if you just switch it over, it's a matter of that we are capable no. of producing these things. The grain, so the grains that are edible to people use a lot more water, and there are a lot more uh, nitrogen. There's a lot less nitrogen. Ah, you can still turn like that, that stuff into refined products. You mean the stuff that's not fit for people? Yeah, I mean that's isn't that like refined? Uh, isn't that like corn syrup and stuff? There's no, food products that can be made of, and it's also. So isn't that yeah, also about when it's when it's harvested? It's all sorts of factors, but like the very plants um, don't like there's, there's like great uh, there's a strains of cheap grain that's used to make feed for other animals that regardless of when they're picked isn't going to be something that people should be eating. Should be eating. The point is, in terms of calories, in terms of land, in terms of these resources, we can easily shift to feed every hungry person in the world just with one con i don't know about that one easily like, i know that's you, not I even know, counting it, it may be the case it, like that may be the case but if you want it to be convincing there's gonna have to be like empirics behind that right um, i literally can't like i'd like, love to close the window and and look at a bunch of research but i'm on my phone i can't i will say fine. google uh, i'm not saying you're necessarily million. wrong but but if uh, okay, I'll, what's it called? What do I look up? Cornell, th I believe it's three hundred million, um, and that's what you get three hundred million. Eight hundred million. Uh, million. Sorry, uh, eight hundred million people. Yeah, it's eight hundred million hungry people in the world, and there's yeah, just in terms of calories. The U.S. could feed. Uh, this is from two thousand. Still the same amount of hungry people. Um, we, we can also just produce a um, paper. Oh, wait, no, this is from 1997. Yeah, so that yeah, was, I'm telling you that was actually the less. There's actually less, yeah, I, there's actually less but, animals being fed then, so it's probably more now. Right, but I think if I'm going to be taking this as a source, like, I don't, um, or if I'm going to be taking something as a source, I'd like it to be like more updated, especially so the things, things that, things that were no, discovered no, that, 20 no, years no, ago no, don't just, count, so the Earth is no longer yeah. around because we discovered it a while ago. No, no. Well, okay. There's an I think, easier I think point. I'm cutting. Wait, there's hold on. I think I'm point. cutting out because, like, whatever you guys said, can you guys repeat? Because I cut out. I'm just saying there's an easier point because that's from 1997 or whatever, right? The yes. U.S. actually ate less animals back then, so they actually, if they're saying back then the food that they're feeding to the animals could feed 800 million people, the amount of consumption of animals in America has actually gone up. So that's probably. The, the fact that it's out of date is probably worse for your um, argument. No, I don't think that's the case. If you can find 
like the reason I don't think that's the case is one that doesn't take into account all sorts of things we know about climate change today or things you know about the soil because like in the two in the mid 2000s we spent like a lot of money uh, in our agricultural sciences we like really buffed that up and I'm a little bit skeptical of things like honestly before 2010 so if we have um, empirical data that, like from no like recently that corroborates this then sure right like yeah, I know sure. we can we feed can... the world. But like I don't know like whether the claims that this makes is going to be something that we can hold to. Yeah, so we can I can just get you um, a, a, a paper from a guy called Joseph Paul, um, which shows that the best efficient diet um, is a vegan diet, and that the carrying capacity of um, Earth would easily feed the popul the expected population of twenty fifty, which is like ten billion. 10 yeah, billion sure, go for it. Because like I'm looking at other ideal diets, and a lot of them are uh, they involve like fish and like the pescatarian, which is something I don't want to like. I mean, you understand do. you understand the main point here, though, is that when we are feeding animals, we are siphoning grain down. I mean, laws of thermodynamics. All right, so you are <laughs> you are siphoning down. You're losing energy by feeding food animals, food to animals. You know, depending on the animal, it's more or less loss. So there's no way, especially when you're feeding animals. What like you mean by losing fish fish energy? I don't understand that. So if you feed one calorie to an animal, there's no way you can get one or more calories back. So we did well, start with this, Mike. Mike, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> okay. We did already explain. So this circling just back. Before you came in. Just before you came in, that was exactly what went over was the flow chart of the fact that mathematically it must be the case that eating animal products is less efficient and kills more mice. Like if you're ethically opposed to mice being killed, you're killing more mice to eat beef or chicken or eggs. So we did start with that. I completely agree with you, completely encourage you to go on, but we have already shoved this down this guy's throat. Okay, but DZ, do you not believe that's true? Just wondering. Leave, uh, I mean the mice thing? I don't, do you not honestly, believe that, that we lose count? Fertilizer. Do you not believe? All right, maybe if we don't do the whole everyone talks at the exact same time, maybe we can, I can hear something. Okay, do you believe that the laws of thermodynamics do not apply to, to raising animals? That we do not lose energy no, when we feed? No, it's ridiculous. So but we do, so it's is, inefficiency. Right? It doesn't matter, right? There's like calories that we just don't eat. So efficiency, but you can, efi efficiency is normative, right? So efficiency has to be with regard to some goal. And if the goal is merely to cram as much calories down a person's throat where they can be eating dirt or whatever, right? Anything that would have gone to an animal just goes to them. Sure, right? But if we're talking about optimizing like calorie per food that we find enjoyable or palatable, etc., that's going to be different. We're also just looking at calories. We're talking about calories because that's what people Not die of starvation from. But you can plant other plants that have higher nutrient values in certain ways. It doesn't have to just be right. But a lot of those ha take like a high, have a higher water a requirement. Most legumes, people, legumes, high protein. Do you, do you not have a super high water requirement? I mean, I live right next to. Sweden. I think I think legumes and like beans in generals don't right, but like for fruit, that's one of the things that has a higher water content. Or a lot of and like you um, do not have broccoli. to eat fruit. You don't have to eat fruit. I mean, if we, it's if probably it going to be the case for a lot of people. Or not. Yeah. So we're talking. Well, about... I mean, an optimal like production thing, people would just have to eat what's local to them. Right, like so, like people would not have avocado for the most. part. I don't part. agree people with that. Have... I believe that you know, if you ship a banana from Ecuador on a freight sh freight, you can actually be doing less energy than local local greenhouse grown veggies, or emit less it's greenhouse just gases than a local more carbon into the air. No, um, it's not just because your banana per no. If you look at banana, like CO two per banana, CO two per nutrient per calorie, and so forth, you. Just because of the massive size of a freighter ship and the cost of CO2 per mile that freight is driven per pound, it's exorbitantly low. So you're going to be way lower than that than, for example, having a cow in your backyard that's literally burping up exorbitant amounts of methane. Wait, on a daily are you basis. saying the lifetime of a freighter operating over like the lifetime of a cow, if the, so those are the two same things, you're saying the cow um, is going to be more detrimental to the environment, the single cow, versus... The freighter? I'm saying a freighter. I'm talking about the, the banana, the shipment of food. I'm saying that not in all cases is local lower. 
Right. Well, I'm saying that freighters, like just having freighters in general, is going to be bad for the environment, right? It's per well, calorie. not as bad as a local uh, greenhouse. Like, I mean, do you, you okay? So let's say you live in a, a far north climate where you could be growing veggies with greenhouses. You know, you have to heat them. That uses a lot of greenhouse gases. But it's healthy to have vegetables. You should be eating vegetables. I think we can all agree. Right. Uh, it can be a lower footprint to be shipping them with using certain things. Obviously, not air. But in terms of freighters, there's an entire book actually on uh, bananas uh, being more eco, being shipped on freighters. How old is this one? Is this also from 97? Uh, actually, 1907. So it's actually no longer true. 1907. Oh, okay. I'm just joking. <laughs> the, Earth is actually, the Earth is actually not flat because we are not round because we discovered that too long ago. It's actually flat now. I don't know if you um, can just like, quickly also, I'm quote you out of context. Uh, if you go into um, if you go to general, I've just put up the two. Um, I've just put up the the, the specific paper. And I'll I'll also put up a Guardian article talking to the author of the um the paper, and he mm -hmm. said that it's uh, less it, you'll have more of an impact just switching to a, a vegan diet, and it all ties in obviously. So the the less <clears throat> um the less efficient uh, the less efficient diet is going to have more impact on the environment, but it also means that you're going to have less food to feed people. Right, but that we're still talking about the local the local problem, right? Uh, the local, I can find you another one as well, but I, I'm pretty sure it was this guy who covered it who said um, it's usually not the case that uh, the locavorism is just this sort of feel good thing. And quite often it's the case, like what Mike was saying, where um, food shipped from interstate or, or internationally, it doesn't have that much of a carbon footprint compared to growing a, a cow for steak or whatever. Now, if right. you fly but, them but over, that's, it's quite often the case that it'll be more. That that will be the case, but most but of the point, time, if you on, just mine, on. I agree that we shouldn't have cows for production, at least for the most part, right? They think cows are only going to be useful for like producing manure. That's the only like thing I would say. But if we're talking about uh, local production of vegetables versus, um, I guess, like international, like foreign production of vegetables, right? And the idea is whether or not uh, taken in con uh, taken in whole, like holistically. Whether or not uh, not producing locally versus producing locally is going to contribute more toward uh, environmental change than not, right? Like that, that's what we're looking at. It, it, obviously, if you hold everything steady, then if you just walk over to your neighbor's um, farm and, and pick something out of their backyard, that's obviously going to have less of an impact than getting the right. same product from interstate. But right. if the product is uh, expensive enough on the environment, then the fact that it's next door to you is not going to um, – it's not going to outweigh a product being flown in either – or sorry, being shipped in from interstate or overseas. Quite but often, that, even if you just I mindlessly – I think if the, you have the, 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 a, a, a – sorry, I'm just going to say quickly. If you have a, a vegan diet where you don't really check where the products are coming from, the chances are that it, it seems to be from what I've read – um, that that will be less impactful on the environment than somebody who is a locavore eating some sort of an om omnivorous diet. Right, but we're talking about people who are having like a vegetarian diet, right? Uh, and is it better to eat locally or to not eat locally? And I think in almost all cases, uh, it's better to eat locally because even if there was the, or let me phrase this, even if like everyone is vegan, the, sh the the act of like having an infrastructure that can ship food around is going to negatively impact um, climate change, right? Like we don't want that. That's just not sustainable. Well, just growing foods that are required by the human. One of us is cutting out. Growing foods that the body or well, that is I can't understand. Healthier. Nick, you can't understand me right no. now. It's really ridiculous that you would say you can't understand I me. Mean, that's the thing that comes in clear. <laughs> okay, I'm it, trying that, to hold that this That actively button. infuriates me. All right, yeah, go on. You are going to need to produce foods that the human body requires anyway or to be healthier, and they will have an impact on the environment. So it's a matter of weighing which one is which. So again, in northern climate, it can be worse. But I'm, I'm honestly more curious about you supporting that position, which I believe you said we can feed more people in a system with animals. And I want to know how that works when, for example, 
We can talk about protein, how you can't create extra protein from animals. They have to take that nitrogen from plants fixed from the atmosphere but through nitrogen I understand fixation. that you're using thermodynamics as your guiding principle. Also, in terms of protein and nitrogen, just you can't make more nitrogen. Right, so I understand that you're using thermodynamics as like the principle in which you want to like organize production, but I think it's a little more complicated than that. I'll get like the store the reports that talk about having uh, aquaponic or having like, animal agriculture as a more sustainable uh, uh, alternative to like a pure vegan or like yeah to a pure vegan or like non animal based production setup. One second. It'll depend on on the model that you're putting up, but essentially, uh, I think there's some like very specific modeling where you can have a, an animal that eats some um, like, you know, byproducts that, that humans can't do anything with, but it's going to be essentially an almost vegan diet. Um, things like aquacultures I've heard can be very, can be very efficient as well. Um, but that's, if you're going to compare, I guess, aquacultures, some sort of aquaculture versus a vegan diet, maybe you can produce something. Um, but uh yeah that that's still probably going to be a mostly vegan diet i'd say and right, at no the end one, of the day like the ideal part would be like if i had my way everyone would be vegan right that would be like my ideal however in lieu of like certain physical constraints like the world we live in seems like that might be too idealistic right that's what i'm getting at in what way? I, I, actually, the aquaculture is something that they're still developing, so that's pro possibly more uh, idealistic. Whereas, if people just use the current model and just switch to a vegan diet, that seems fairly um, doable. Well, that wouldn't like help with like climate change, right? Even if everyone's no, no, that, to, that would have a massive. Oh that would actually have a God. pretty big impact on climate change. Um, so, and... if we were to, like, as far as we were to, like stop like having cows, etc., even with the 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 the, the lack of methane like uh, production and like in carbon emissions like that's like the biggest um source of climate change and were we to sorry to you're cutting out quite a bit i don't know if it right yeah you sound like a robot in the tunnel oh, shit. okay i, I think you, what you were saying that. something like um something like if we even if we get rid of obviously you're just conceding the cows and going for the lower or the smaller animals. So that's obviously going to be less impactful as well. Um, but quite often people will re replace calorie for calorie um, with these sort of, um, I guess, methods. Uh, so they'll, they'll replace one animal with another animal, generally calorie for calorie, um, and that brings its own problem. So something like a chicken, um, you know, if you replace a calorie for calorie, what they often do is that what that will the effect it'll have quite often is that it'll increase factory farm chickens and, and shit like that. I mean, I don't even know what to say. It seems like you said that everyone should be on a vegan diet, so it's cool with me. Yeah. I mean, that's not... I said that, like, right off the bat. But okay, I also said that if it was the case that a vegan diet wasn't sustainable, like I would bite the bullet and say, all right, well, looks like we're going to have to murder some animals or something. Because we're going to have to do that anyway while we have a vegan diet. And I would go further and add that in virtually any situation that you are getting animal calories, it, could be, it would be more efficient to be growing plant calories. You know, if you have just an amount of land, you can grow vertically and so forth that, you know, no matter what you need to get that calorie from the sun, you need to get that nitrogen take from a, the air. And so maybe, look yeah, at maybe, this, by the way, here's the, here's the paper I was looking at about global food production or global impacts of food production. And, uh, one of the things with vegan diets, if you're, um, if you're trying to farm the same plot of land, that's not going to be sustainable. You need to have like places that you farm from, right? Like the way Native Americans used to do it was uh, a lot of when the, when the when the pilgrims came by, right? They saw this pristine land. They marked they were marked about it in all sorts of journals. Uh, turns out most of that land is actually cared for, and Native Americans is able to move in five year increments, so as not to tax the land over a hard, sustained way, right? Yeah. Um, so 
Yeah, so this guy is actually, funnily enough, the guy, the article that you posted is the guy that I was talking about. So J Joseph Paul or J Paul um, is this is the guy that I was talking about who um, has basically has gone vegan. So if you, I'll put up the Guardian article again, and it's him saying that he's he's changed, he's cut animal products out of his diet because he just can't justify having it, having done the um, the study that he that you actually posted up. But he can't justify what? He can't justify having animal products in his diet. Oh, yeah. God, I heard that problem. I'm pretty sure I heard a radio interview with that same scientist. He's been doing a kind of promotional tour discussing his findings and how he basically became vegan after doing the math. Yes, yeah, so that's a, an article. And at the end of it, he um, states that he's uh, cut animal products out of his diet purely from the... Um, research that is done, so I don't think he's particularly concerned about the ethics of um, of animal uh, and how the animals and how they're treated and all that. It's just purely from the ethics of um, the land use and the effect on the environment. He's cut it out. So he, yeah, like um, Isla was saying, he he seems to be have uh, gone around, done a bit of um, interview work as well. I, I heard him do an interview where they discussed. He's a nice guy um, too. Yeah, so where they discussed. Um, uh, I think uh, sort of regenerative farming that you're talking about um, in somewhere in Colombia where they have cattle farmers um, and they've managed to regenerate some of the, um, the, uh, the land and the farm and have done, one of the farmers has managed to do it. Um, but even by their own admission, it requires an enormous amount of labor work. And what uh, Joseph Poor has said is that it might be feasible um, and given that, uh, it's difficult to get some people to, or get some amount of people to quit animal products. Um, that might be a method to reduce environmental effects and environmental damage of, of animal so, products. I would argue uh, lab grown meat. Really for only sorry. Yeah, lab grown meat. Mike was mentioning lab grown meat, but that's... yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree continue. With that. That, that's, continue. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But what he said was that um, it, it's really feasible in somewhere like maybe Colombia, where the labor cost is going to be quite low. But then once you go to anywhere pretty much like Europe, uh, America, Australia, that's just not going to be feasible because the amount of work and organization that's required, um, the, the cost scale is just going to go way up. Okay, but the, the, the hostile uh, clarification I have to make, obviously I don't mean in a hostile way. Um, so you guys may not be familiar with this, Mike the Vegan and Mr. President. But, you know, the already the United Nations Water Footprint Report makes it clear the ecological impacts of small scale, quote unquote, more ethical cattle farming and pig farming, any of those ruminants. It is worse than high efficiency factory farming. Factory farming genuinely is Link, more please. efficient. And that's why the price is lower. So among the many, many factors involved is simply how much water is used up how much pollution is produced per pound of meat as a finished product. And the most, of the, sorry, the most ecological in terms of all the measurable impacts is like the high efficiency factory farming done in the Netherlands. And then when you look at the numbers, the same math done for like third world country where it's still small plot, traditional factory farming, it is much, much worse, again, per pound of output. So that's an ethical as well as ecological clarification that a lot of Link, people please. don't think. Um, quick question. If the, if the more we factory farm, the more thermodynamic it is, does that mean the more suffering we give the animal, the better it is for that argument? Well, in theory, in effect, factory yeah. farming... Sorry, in theory, factory farming could have less suffering for the animals. In theory. In practice, everyone's horrified by factory farming. But there's no reason why an animal will necessarily suffer less on a small family farm versus a large factory farm. The conditions of the animal, the conditions of slaughter, if you compare from farm to farm, some are going to be better and some are going to be worse. It's the same thing with a hospital. I can't say to you that large hospitals always treat people worse than small hospitals or small independent doctor's offices. Some are going to be bad and some are going to be worse. But the, well, but the ecological... Factory farming needs to optimize the space, right? Like a reason that makes factory farming bad for chickens, it's because they need to optimize like per, per like uh, yeah, area that's 
there for farming they need to cram as much chickens as they can in there as a farm they're not trying to like optimize per like square footage right they're just optimizing so i i appreciate that you're yeah, being so sincere from I appreciate you being sincere but actually when you read the studies it is a shocking and horrifying oh, fact speaking of the study do you have, have the links please yeah i do of course i do uh, why, like, why don't you let me finish my sentence sure, you why if you're not a troll hand. why interrupt me mid-sentence with it because why? it's like the third thing that you've made a claim i on can that send you, didn't you the link but why don't you not interrupt me mid-sentence you fucking troll it was shocking to me personally when I first read studies that were explaining in terms, in terms of the well-being of the chickens, raising them in high-density cage lots is actually better because uh, for in terms of the chicken provide the suffering they endure. Because – why don't I finish my sentence? One of the major factors when you have chickens that have more room and are running around is that they actually attack and kill one another. They trample each other. Some starve. Some are injured. So even though it seems like a horrifying spectacle to look at chickens in cages, when you do the math, when you read the studies, you come to the paradoxical conclusion that the reason why human beings invented these more efficient large-scale farms where each chicken has its own little cage, what, it is not just more efficient. Fewer of the chickens die, fewer of the chickens die horrible deaths, suffering, being pecked to death by other chickens. Chicken nature, like human nature, is not as pretty as you might want to think it is. They aren't all just friends when they have that room to, to run around. So it is more efficient and fewer chickens have to be born and die to produce the same amount of meat. And the actual life cycle, cycle analysis of suffering paradoxically actually does favor modern methods. I'm morally opposed to all of it, but it is really interesting if you actually do reading, which is something I do. Did, did I interrupt you and ask if you have a fucking study when you were making your horseshit claims about fucking... The value of a I'm, chicken I'm shit gonna pretend fertilizer that you knew that troll. there was a pun in there. Uh, I don't can you, 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 you give me a citation there. for your claims of manure, you piece of shit? I did. Get wrecked. Now drop the link that you were talking about. Uh, off topic question this is a completely different branch but if um the world was to go vegan animals such as cows sheep do you think they would go extinct as, as a i did uh, a lot of them analysis of this in-depth analysis so obviously we breed these animals and uh it really depends on how you want to do it if you want to keep slaughtering them uh you can basically bring them down to whatever level you want and you could obviously just keep them alive in sanctuaries and so forth like for example if the vegan if the world went vegan obviously vegans who care a lot about animals would be the ones in control of what happens to the animals and so you can either do a fast or slow scenario fast scenarios within a few years if you can continue slaughter at the current rate you know it's basically dairy cows making it up to four years on average <clears throat> before they're spent after that uh basically every animal will be slaughtered all 70 billion almost all 70 billion land animals that we have on earth will be slaughtered or you can let them live out their natural lifespan which again longest is cows which is about 20 years so in about 20 years you can have uh whatever level of animals you want so you can just dedicate however much animal sanctuary space you want my thing with that is, is basically just you... a massive plug for mike's youtube channel <laughs> well, I did an in-depth thing. All the numbers, every single, you know, the life expectancies of all these. I would. Could you like that? To subscribe, man. You don't have to sell it to me. I am on I my am... phone. If I leave this, I can't hear you. Oh, that's fair. Um. um okay. Um, is there any any more questions or anything like that? So I can... Uh, no, no. Um, you said, Mike, that the live let them live out their natural lifespan. Is being hunted or killed by another predator part of the natural life cycle? I mean, people would have to decide how much they would want to rewild. I mean, you could rewild massive corridors uh, from the 2007 land you study from the USDA. For about half of the lower 48 land is used for animal agriculture. So that would free up a ton of land so you could decide how much you want to rewild. And I, I as a vegan, at least, am not trying to stop nature. Like, I'm about, about reinstilling nature. I dropped a, a link from 2000. 19 about carrying capacity for land it seems that that's the elemental has, study i mentioned earlier yeah I, a vegan i think doesn't have the highest i think um lacto vegetarian had the highest 
And so that's where, again, I was responding to. That's the study that looked at. They they did not look at arable land in what I view as an accurate way. I also have a whole video about this called Why Vegan Diet Failed Land Use Study. Um, But it's a matter of, again, they didn't look at like anything that wasn't currently growing crops, which you could obviously grow crops on, was not counted at all. And so, and there's just things like terracing, like any, any land that has too, is too hilly, has mountains, is considered not arable places that you could not be grazing. You could be growing massive amounts in there. So they were saying there's a large swath of land that can only be used for grazing, which is completely inaccurate. Things you can grow like hemp and so many things. I mean, we also, I, I could go further into this, but just the fact that China is starting to green, green the desert in reasonable amounts using like microbes and uh, cross hatching of, of wind barriers and growing a, a ton, a ton of plants and orchards and all these things. I mean, the, just the idea of arable land that they have in that study is laughable. Again, that's the study that showed that vegan diets use one sixth of the land as omnivores. I just sent links. I was requested to provide articles, which is totally reasonable to interrupt someone in mid sentence. It takes a few minutes to go and copy and paste links, you piece of shit. If you actually want to do some that. fucking reading, you can click on the fucking links, or you can watch my YouTube video discussing it. <laughs> not yourself. All right, thanks for the links. I'll go over it right now. About and the, just so I'm clear, you're, the claims you were making was that it's actually better for like um, animal happiness to be on factory farms, right? Well, that's a totally reasonable summary of what I said. Why should I okay. even bother talking when you're you're so perspicacious and able to summarize? You're so summarize. welcome. Absolutely welcome. Dude, ha- have you been sincere in this discussion or are you just trolling? I mean, are you just doing this to piss off a bunch of vegans? Like, what's, what's in I haven't pissed off any vegans. You, the way you keep moving the goalposts and changing the point of the debate, I just, I just don't get it. Mr. Mr. Get President, did I piss you off by any chance? Of course not. The president's cool as an iceberg. All right, who else is here that I might have pissed off? Um, Mr. Third- Thermodynamics here. I'll even start off being slightly sardonic. I but if you were sincere off? at any point, well, then when one of these anything. issues fell, you change your view, right? Like you accept it. You were presented with evidence. Eggs are not health food, right? Basically. Right. But I Googled. And so doesn't that change your view of the issue? All sorts of conflicting pieces of information. Okay. Anyway, it just seems to me like so many fundamental tenets you presented – were refuted very what easily. What was Not one of the fundamental? Claim, what were some of the fundamental fertilizer. tenets that were refuted? Go for it. Your claims about fertilizer, your claims about health benefits. Okay, that's generic. Where are my claims? Tell me a claim yeah, that. I am not really interested in recapitulating. Oh, this good. Dirt, more rhetoric. Okay, more fucking rhetoric. Point, out of you. People have taken the time good. to provide you with sources and considerations. To, uh, right, and I had a productive, a scale, I had a scale. productive I mean, conversation saying, with oh, well, Mr. President, true, but what you're saying just, just seems to be literally all rhetoric or nonsense, right? And I'm still going over this link just to make sure whether you're, what you were saying before about chickens, like having better lives in cages, for example, why would you dying care? better. Why would you care? Why is it that you just keep moving the goalposts when you present with this? What goalposts am I moving? The beginning of this conversation. Is that chicken eggs are so healthy that they justify this form of agriculture? They when did I say that? Now you're lying. Disadvantages. Now you're then why wouldn't lying. the argument collapse when that's been refuted? Now you're actively lying. It's weird that you have to okay, lie so to not look, see, look like you a can fool. Represent. Mike the vegan took the time to present you with all this shit. Everyone has links uh-huh. to studies. You said like, oh right. well, if eggs are unhealthy, why don't you have studies? Everyone has a ton of studies. Yeah. I the summary graph. There's we stuff. all then posted why did your studies, argument right? Change at that point? Why do you keep moving the goalposts and keep trying to defend what? the position? Literally, right? We were talking about the health of eggs. We talked about the health of cholesterol and a healthy diet, right? I've shown like there's a lot of conflicting information about it, and I posted all of these things, right? Now, for example, you want to say – here's I'll even throw you a bone – that I was saying something like uh, eggs are just bad are just uh, healthy to eat, right? Now, I didn't say that. I said eggs in moderation can be fine, right? And you can eat them, and it's part of a healthy diet, which is corroborated by, like, multiple, like, state, except for Australia, apparently. They might be the smartest one on this one. Multiple state-based um, dietary uh, functions, right? For example, the United States says it's fine, and it's part of a healthy diet to eat one to two eggs a day, right? Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. Um, ask yourself, Stel. Let's do this logical spectrum. So if broccoli, if every time I eat broccoli... I had to kill a chicken. 
just for no reason right. that was the rule on planet earth if ethically sure. now broccoli is unbelievably healthy i was saying to you before like just look at the fucking stats about how unhealthy eggs are compared to Glad you have to convince broccoli, me that broccoli is legitimate healthy and if you don't believe that just agree with me for the sake of the hypothetical example that broccoli is a really healthy food if i sure. had to kill a chicken Obviously. if i had to kill a chicken every time i ate broccoli i would refuse to eat broccoli right but okay. your beginning position seemed to be that eggs had such extraordinarily positive nutritional value that it was justified <laughs> What did I say that, ma- that implied that? Wait, one second. Um, don't you have to kill the broccoli to eat the broccoli, though? I know. That's true. Bro- you got to murder the broccoli. You wouldn't believe it. Actually, broccoli is a flower. Um, broccoli is a flower. Just, just, you don't need to kill the plant. But we do, yeah, though. Well. But no, the wait. stems are delicious, though. I have broccoli in my garden. You can cut it and um, harvest over it. Just also, Socrates, what, the uh, link that you put up, uh, I think it was in Debate Crucible text, um, so that's actually by someone called Maria Luz Fernandez. Um, and just to sort of put on the, um, the, wait, which one, the can capacity one? Uh, no, 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 the egg, the eggs one. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So that one, if you go and look at the author, it's by someone called ML Fernandez. So Maria Luz Fernandez, she's a, um, well to basically use tinfoil hat rhetoric. She's basically, a a shill for the egg industry. I can get you uh, a. Uh, I should be able to get you a, a, a set of letters or emails from the egg board where a article came out saying uh, something bad about the egg industry, and they right. name her um, as. Uh, I think they they name her as as her as their friend in the science um, community who can write a, a positive um, article in behalf of eggs. Gotcha. Yeah, that would I would um, I would find that like a disqualifying thing. Like if she's just a shill. So let me go look at the other lists of like because there's like a bunch of articles. I, that one just seemed to be the best written one in terms of um, not in terms of science, just in terms of like presenting the art, the the idea across. It's also but that's a, thanks for pointing. It's also worth reiterating something I typed in earlier before I talked where. It's illegal to advertise eggs as healthy according to the FDA, just based off their nutrition. Oh, no way. Yes. Yes, I mentioned that before, too, the PCRM court case. I did actually already cover that, a lot of the substance said before. And it's, it is interesting. Reading about PCRM's case is fascinating. Um, with a glass of wine a day is considered healthy, but I don't think you're allowed to advertise it as such. You can't advertise bottles of wine as health food. What's considered healthy, sorry? A glass of wine a day. But you're no, unable to. Uh, 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 hey, look let at, me just look at, check that. I, actually. Post, I post this in the Crucible one. Take a look at this. All right, now this. Tell me if there's anything wrong with this particular study, Mr. President. If I open that, I'll leave, but it looks like it's actually just describing it as a food for animals. Maybe. No, this is a food for human health. Okay, I was just reading the first sentence. Because I can't open it. <laughs> the title Unless, is if I open it, I can't. Nutritional value, bioactivities, and emerging benefits for human health. Okay, yeah, literally it, it stops at emerging Ben. So. <laughs> oh, gotcha. That makes. I gotcha. Do you believe it's the egg that's our fault, or just the dosage we are taking of eggs? A single well, egg puts you up to the the, the, daily the problem with eggs. Uh, um, the, the biggest problem with eggs is the uh, contribution to cholesterol is like like just bad in general, right? So uh, it's a case that like eggs to be fair, like people that have sorry to cut you off, but you're time. you're very robotic. But whether or not there's, like the correlation is very disease uh, that seems to be. Oh, am I cutting out? You were to start with, but then you got good again as I interrupted you. Sorry. Oh no worries. Uh, it's just uh, that eggs. Like if you if you're at risk for heart disease, you want to avoid eggs. You want to just completely cut off cholesterol entirely. And if you're is healthy every- without at risk, if you're healthy and not at risk, then you could sneak in eggs, but it's probably better not. 
traditionally how I believe we first got eggs would we would have to put a lot of effort into gathering an egg because they're either a high in a tree or defended by some kind of bird, which means right. the energy we got from an egg would have counteracted the all the energy we got to get the egg. Nowadays we're all lazy, so you, I agree multiple eggs would be bad for you now just because we're not using that energy. Um, I'm not sure. I think if you're going back that far, that those people wouldn't have had much um, uh, much to eat anyway. So an egg is certainly better than stuff. But overall, I think it gives um, you like fat for like a long also, period of time. Yeah, yeah. But if you know, if your lifespan's forty or fifty, then it probably doesn't matter too much if you're eating eggs. And bottom um, line, I mean, you can have negative things that you can eat in a certain amount and be healthy. I mean, I could do a line of cocaine and probably be okay. And, and you know, you can smoke a certain amount of cigarettes that won't increase disease. That doesn't mean that it's part of healthy diet, in my opinion. And that's why vegans are the only ones with average levels of cholesterol that don't progress atherosclerosis. Um, I can have a better look at I've just had a quick look over. It seems to be saying and, and linking a lot of the same previous studies I've seen before that you've, um, the one that you put up. I can have a better look at, at it if you want and get back yeah, to you. Me, but, um, make it seems sure to to, that there's one, no like, like shills in this one. Uh, the, the, one of the links that they've put in is actually Maria Luz Fernandez. So I think she's Mother, link, link number six. So they're using one of her studies, but um, yeah. So, like, I'm not, I don't want to say, like, because um, with a lot of studies, there's even studies that I, that I put up that are, um, f like, funded or at least partially funded or the researchers would have got funding in the past through pharmaceutical companies or, or something like that. Now, I don't want to say uh, just, like, across the board that, a sh you know, someone getting a funding from a certain group or whatever is necessarily something to just uh, to ignore immediately. It's more... Now, it's, it's a bit of a pain in the ass with the egg industry because what they've done is a lot of the stuff that they've said um, or pretty much everything that they've said with their studies is not incorrect. It's just the way that they've framed it, and that's sort of the trick. Um, Maria Luz Fernandez, I specifically um, highlight as being a bad person because um, she, <laughs> the egg industry, I'll just, I always, um, it takes me a bit of time to find this uh, set of emails, but um, I think Michael Greger and Bite Size Vegan have done like a video on it and you can read the emails, but they've, I think, named her directly as being one of their people. So, yeah, I, I put up studies from that are like statins and whatever else, which show a certain result. So it's not just that they're paid off or, you know, paid by a certain industry or whatever. It's more um, how they've designed the study and what their purpose is, I guess. And the way that's always going to go be part of the um, like the evaluation of a source. So that's good to know. Well, let's draw conclusions. Why don't you guys wrap it up? Who do you think won? Should we all be eating chicken eggs for the value of the manure they produce, or? Should we all go back to factory farming like easel ones? I missed the manure argument for the egg, sorry. Uh, just that chickens tend to be good for like local farms, right? Their manure is like pretty useful. They're high phosphate um, producing manure. Or containing manure, I'm sorry. But eventually can be, they can actually poison the ground, so you gotta be so any like nitrogen fixing or like phos or like things that are like high in phosphate requirements if you're gonna have like a lot of chickens. All right, is there anything else we want to talk about? I think we kind of covered all that. All this. Yeah, I think we covered it. So having been presented with this stuff. Uh, the only name I know you by is Eisel Buster. I don't know why you chose that name or why you were given it, but what has your position changed? Uh, yeah. Okay, glad to hear it. Dude, I've never heard anybody say that before. Despite your best intentions, I was able to change my 
position as something better. Thank you. Mostly it was Mr. President. Uh, and I guess, is it, was it Mike the vegan? Is it, are you the thermodynamic yeah, guy? That's me. Sorry, I couldn't actually give you research on right now because all I mean, my videos have like You didn't stuff. play a part in it, but I appreciate talking to you. Oh.